I'm so happy you're here today. I thought maybe it was raining and you weren't going to come. But the other day, we got a whole bunch of new books in the library. And so I thought, what should I tell for stories today? And I said, I'm going to tell the kids all brand new stories. So guess what? No one has ever heard these stories before. And you're going to have to let me know if I should tell them to other kids or if I should not read them again at story time. Okay? So do you think you could help me do that? Yeah. All right. Our first story is called No Swimming for Nelly. Does it sound good? Yeah. I like the picture. Do you? Yeah. Yep. And Nelly looks like she's going to be swimming very safely, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's see why she's not going to swim anymore. So the book is called what? No Swimming for Nelly. Mommy gave Nelly a new swimsuit. And Nelly looked marvelous. Look at how good she looks. Right? Oh, this page is a little bit stuck. She looked marvelous from the front. She looked marvelous from the side. She looked marvelous from the other side. And even from below. She looks pretty good. It's for swimming, said Mommy. No swimming for me, said Nellie. Why not, Mommy asked. Because the water is too cold. And I don't like waves. I don't like water in my eyes. And I don't like water in my nose. And because water scares me. I like sw my swimsuit, but I don't like swimming. So, Nellie wore her swimsuit while she was biking and while she was playing basketball and having dinner at the fancy restaurant and even while she was sleeping. Look at her in her bathing suit. One day, Mommy said to Nellie, I have a surprise, Nellie. We're going to visit Grandma. Yay, said Nellie. I can show her my new swimsuit. Of course, Mommy said, you can show it to her. Grandma's going to teach you how to swim. Nellie and Mommy took a short plane ride, and Grandma met them at the airport. Soon they were at Grandma's house, where Nellie saw all of Grandma's trophies. Grandma was a swimming champion. I see you're all ready for your first lesson, Grandma said. No swimming for me, Nellie said, but I can watch you. Grandma and Nellie walked to the pool. It was a very big pool. Then Nellie sat in a chair and watched Grandma dive into the water and race across the pool. Five minutes without stopping, Grandma was still a champ. Come on in, Grandma said. Nellie dipped her toe and then her whole foot and then her ankle and guess what? The water wasn't even cold. Soon, she was up to her waist in water. Nellie thought she'd be scared, but she wasn't. Grandma showed Nellie how to blow bubbles in the water. Can you do that? And Nellie really liked the bubbles that she made. Then, Grandma showed Nellie how to float and kick and move her arms. Time for dinner, Mommy called. But I want to keep swimming, Ma Nellie said. At dinner time, Nellie practiced blowing her bubbles. Look at her. She's blowing them in a big jar. 
She practiced moving her arms and her legs and kicking, too. Nellie even practiced in her sleep. Look, she's swimming while she's sleeping. When Nellie went back to the pool the next day, she swam like a champion. Look, she looks just like her grandma, huh? Just like grandma. And guess what? What do you think? Did we like that one? Thumbs up? Guess how I knew you liked it? Guess how I knew that you liked it? Can you guess how I knew? All of you had a big, big smile on your face. So I said, guess what? All these kids love this story. And I liked it too. So you see, no swimming for Nellie. I'm going to read it again to the kids. All right? Yes. Um, we can do open shut them at the very end. Okay? All right. Now, story number two. See, it's brand new again. And it's called, Am I Yours? Looks like you could like this one, too. If I see smiles on your faces, I'm going to know that you say, oh, I like this story a lot. It does look like a rock, doesn't it? Maybe it's, maybe it's an egg. But whose egg? We don't know whose egg it is. It could be any kind of an egg. It could be a bird. It could be a dinosaur egg. Maybe. It could. All right. Well, when we start reading it, we're going to find out. So it's called, Am I Yours? Uh-oh. Kind of, that might be a hint of what kind of an egg it is. What are all those things? All right. Yeah, it's funny. Okay, here we go. Ready for story number 10? Two. Okay. 200 million years ago, an icy wind began to blow. It blew great clouds from east to west, and it pushed an egg right out of its nest. Do you see it falling? Yeah. Uh-oh, the poor little egg. The egg rolled gently down the hill, slowly at first and then fast, until it bumped a rock and it spun around and it came to land on level ground. There it is. It sat there that cold, dark night. At last, it felt the warm sunlight. And with the light came bumping feet. The egg called out, soft and sweet. Excuse me, please, but am I yours? I'm sure I'm a dinosaur's. First, Stegosaurus wandered near and asked the egg loud and clear, What do you look like inside that shell? I can't see you, so I can't tell. Are there spikes along your spine, long and flat and sharp like mine? I have no spikes, I'm sad to say, so I'm not yours, but that's okay. Next, Brachiosaurus leaned in low and asked his question, calm and slow. What do you look like inside that shell? I can't see in, so I can't tell. Do you have a longish neck or is it short? Can you check? Yeah. Oh, it's very short, this neck of mine. So I'm not yours, but I'll be fine. Triceratops came trotting by and spoke to the egg eye to eye. What do you look like inside that shell? I can't see in, so I can't tell. Do you have horns? One, two, and three? Three sharp horns? Just like me? 
I have no horns. I wish I did. So I'm not yours. I'm not your kid. Corythosaurus ambled past. She stopped and stared and spoke at last. What do you look like inside that shell? I can't see. I can't see in, so I can't tell. Is there a crest upon your head? Or is it flat and smooth instead? Oh, I have no crest. I just checked now. So I'm not yours, but thank you anyhow. Tyrannosaurus came to see and asked the ache quite lovingly. What do you look like inside that shell? I can't see in, so I can't tell. Do you have a mouth full of teeth? Sharp up top and down beneath? Oh, my teeth are few, the egg replied. So I'm not yours, it said, and then he sighed. Whose could it be? The sun sank slowly in the sky and the lonely egg began to cry. The light of day is fading fast. I'm sure this night will be my last. I can't survive in the wind and storm. I'll freeze all alone. I must stay warm. You are not ours. Whose could you be? We wish there was a way to see. But as the sun began to set, it showed a perfect silhouette. A pair of wings, see now we can see inside the egg. A pair of wings, a pointy snout, and two strong legs, both short and stout. We see you now, we see inside your shell. We know your folks, we know them well. The egg was rolled back up the hill, rolled and nudged and pushed until they reached a soft and sandy mound. They left it where it would be found. See them pushing it way up there? Then came the thump of heavy feet. The egg called out so soft and sweet. One last time, I must be sure. Are you the ones I'm looking for? We are, we are. We are yours. We're two ecstatic pterosaurs. And when the night had come and gone, the sky was clear with the light of dawn. There came a tap, a crack, crack, and a scratch. And the lucky egg began to hatch. And that's the end. What did you think? The, I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five thumbs up. I loved that story. Did you love it? 100 thumbs up? 117 thumbs up? Whoa, that was a very, very good story. Though. Okay. So that, that was story number two. No, that was two. First we had No Swimming for Nelly and Am I Yours. Okay. The third brand new story. We have four all together today. You remember this? Yeah. 
Mmm, okay. Well, this one is called Little P. I like that. Little P. Who likes peas? Me. Me too. All right. This is the story of Little P, Mama P, and Papa P. Little P was a happy little guy. He liked to do a lot of things. He liked rolling down hills. Look at how much fun he's having rolling down the hill. He liked hanging out with his pea pals. They're playing hopscotch, you see that? He liked it when Papa P came home at the end of the day. Papa P would fling little P right off the spoon, high into the air, and little P would scream, again, again. At bedtime, little P very much liked snuggling with Mama P and hearing stories about what Mama P was like when she was a little tiny P too. And then there was one thing that little P did not like. What do you think it could be that he didn't like candy? No. Candy is right. Little P did not like candy, just like you. I like candy. Oh, you do? Well, let's see why little P didn't. That's what you have to eat for dinner every night when you're a P. Candy, candy, and more candy. Uh-oh. Are we happy about that? Monday, red candy. Tuesday, orange candy. Wednesday, yellow candy. Thursday, purple and pink polka dotted candy. Friday, striped candy. Saturday, swirly candy. Sunday, rainbow candy. Little P hated all of it. He's so sick of candy. If you want to grow up to be a big, strong pea, you have to eat your candy, P Papa P would say. If you don't finish your candy, then you can't have dessert, Mama P would say. <gasps> How many pieces of candy do I have to have? Eat five pieces of candy and you can have dessert. Five pieces, he whined. Five pieces. Yep, five pieces. That's not nice. One, yuck. Two, Three, black. Four, bleh. Five pieces of candy. Now I can have dessert. Yes, now you can have dessert, said Mama P and Papa P. Little P couldn't wait to see what it was. Spinach! Spinach! Yum, squealed Little P, my very, very favorite. Little P licked his dessert plate. Mmm, clean. Yum. Yum and extra yum. And they lived happily ever after. <laughs> do you guys love your spinach like that? Or do you like the candy? You like candy too? All right, so what, are we, what about that story? Is that a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Thumbs up, we liked it. And guess how I could tell? I read the first story, I read the second story, I read the third story, and guess what I saw? Big, big smiles on your faces. So I knew you liked them. I have one more story to tell you. Okay, this one, guess what the name of this book is? Something smells. No, you don't remember this. It's brand new. All right, how do you, do you like smelly things? 
Well, this the name of this book is Something Smells. Oh, I remember. You do? I remember. No, you don't remember this book. It just came in. We just got it. It might be about something smelly, I bet. I don't think I ever read you a smelly story before. No. All right. Are you ready? I want to see if I see smiles on your faces again. Early one morning, Elliot woke up to the most terrible smell. What could it be? I don't know. He looked around his room and he frowned. You see anything in there that could be smelly? Yeah. What? You think his pajamas? Yeah. He checked under his bed. Was it a skunk? He opened the window. But the neighborhood smelled like fresh morning air. He sniffed Mr. Jiggles. But Mr. Jiggles didn't smell. Pee-wee, his bird, didn't smell. Wednesday snack that he left in his room, not good. Didn't smell, not very much anyway. Elliot could not find the smell that smelled. Maybe it's dad, he thought. You think his daddy is smelly? Yeah. You think so? No. Underpants. <laughs> But Dad smelled pretty nice. He looks nice and clean, not smelly, right? Look how clean he is. At breakfast, his mother scolded him. Not one more day in that costume, Elliot. But he didn't want to take it off. It was the best costume ever. It glowed in the dark, and it happened to be an exact replica of his skeleton. Besides, he was much too busy hunting for the terrible smell. Dog smell, he thought. But you know what? His dog Digsy smelled just like bacon. Little sisters smell. But Lucy, his little sister, smelled just like maple syrup. He bet a million jillion jelly beans. It was the baby. What do you think? Yeah. The baby stinky? Yeah. But baby lilac smelled like baby powder. Maybe it was the cat food. What do you think? Nope. He smelled it. Didn't smell. Maybe it's outside the trash? Yeah? Yeah? But guess what? He looked in that barrel, and all he found was some old Halloween candy. What? What? What was that terrible smell? I can't imagine what it could be. It wasn't a skunk. Or Digsy. Or wasn't Lucy, right? Wasn't the trash. Wasn't Pee Wee. No. It wasn't even the baby. That left only one thing. <coughs> Grandma's favorite Giffords and Snatchel. <coughs> Do you know what's in it? Yes. What? What's in there? Peas. Looks like peas, doesn't it? Looks like pea soup. Neither did Elliot know what was in it. But that wasn't the smell that smelled. He looked up in the attic, looked all around, nothing. He looked down in the basement, nothing. He looked every place in between. He could not find the smell. Not one more second in that costume, young man, said his mother. It's time for your bath. Elliot was disappointed he could not solve the mystery of 
terrible, terrible smell. Look at his mom. You think she's holding anything smelly? That thing is pajamas. Something smells, says Lucy. Something smells, says Grandma. Something smells, said Dad. It's stinky. Smuh, said Baby Lilac. Smuh. Elliot lathered and scrubbed and suds. And when he was done, something swirled right down the drain. The terrible smell was gone. After his bath, Elliot was so excited to put on his new sea monster pajamas. They were the best pajamas ever. They had actual scales and big, scary claws. They felt so good and so clean. He was never, ever going to take them off again. So what was the stinky thing? Right, he was a little stinker, huh? Okay, so. That was our last story. Was it a thumbs up or is it a thumbs down? Thumbs up. Uh, you guys liked every single story today, huh? Yeah. Okay. Now we have to tell something to Erica. Also, do we want to sing the th uh, say the Thanksgiving poem? Yeah. Do. Oh yes, the special get out and vote. Everybody, turn around. What was that? I think I'll what? Run away. Oh, I know a song. A turkey sat on a barnyard fence and he sang this sad, sad tune. Thanksgiving Day is coming, gobble, 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 and I know I'll be eating soon. <laughs> gobble, 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 I don't like Thanksgiving Day. Gobble, 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 gobble. I would like to run away. <laughs> Is that the turkey? <laughs> yeah. Ready? If everybody wants to come on in, get closer if you want. Stand up. Not on top, just yeah. Okay, we're going to look right, right here, okay? Right here. Right here. Ready? Mm -hmm. Ready? So we are here with our little nuggets from the Pooh and Friends Learning Center with an Good. important message. Get out, Get out.